A while back, I saw this really cool Art Deco lamp made out of a series of wooden arches. Unfortunately, I have lost that screenshot a long time ago, so sadly, I can't give credit to the original artist who inspired me. If you guys happen to know who I might be referencing, please leave a comment. I decided that I want to turn that idea into a floor lamp. So let's see how I did it. This video is brought to you by Timberland Pro. The base of the lamp is going to be made out of five inch and a half thick poplar boards. All my long-term friends know that I absolutely love poplar. It's my favorite species of wood and I have tons of poplar projects all throughout my house. At this point, I've already planed and ripped down all my boards to their correct thickness and width. And I also used a miter saw to cut each board to its specific length. If this is the first time you've watched a pneumatic static video, I want to say welcome. I'm glad you're here. Take a second to make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell down below. Each board is going to be arched and also receive a bull nose edge, so double round over edge, which means I need to pull out my router. And it also means lots and lots of sawdust. The first thing I did on each board was to find the center widthwise. I then took that measurement and measured down from the top edge. This gave me the center of the radius for each arch. I marked the radius on a little DIY circle jig, which is basically just a board with a hole cut out screwed to the bottom of the router. I attached the circle jig using a finish nail and began to slowly cut each arch using a quarter inch spiral upcut bit. When cutting thick material like this, it's always a good idea to make multiple passes, only plunging about a quarter inch at a time. Since my straight cut router bit was not long enough to cut all the way through my material, what I did is I cut about a 3 8 of an inch groove, cutting my arch, my full radius arch on one side, and then I hacked off, you know, the bulk of the material up above it. And now I am going to be using a flush trim router bit with a bearing. And that bearing is gonna ride along that smooth surface that I cut for that 3 8 of an inch, and it's just gonna shave off all this extra rough stuff. After a few passes with the flush trim bit, I was able to clean up the arches on each board. Okay, all my boards have this lovely arch, full radius arch cut on them. So now it's time to add the round overs, which is gonna give me a bull nose or double round over on both sides. In my experience, it's not a good idea to try to bite off too much material with a router bit all at once. That can lead to chipping and splintering or even your router getting out of control. It can be kind of scary. I typically recommend kind of, um, you know, taking small passes and nibbling away at the edge before you go in and really hog out all that material. So I'm going to first start by running along the edges of all the boards using a quarter inch round over bit and I'm using just a little trim router and it's a quarter inch shank bit. This will be really easy to handle and move really quickly around the edges. It'll basically just knock off that first little sharp edge of material. Then I can follow up with my big three quarter inch radius round over on my bigger router. This has a half inch shank. Um, it's a lot beefier, it can remove a lot more material. Even though I removed a portion of the material first with the trim router, I'm still gonna go slow with this bad boy just to make sure that I don't get any chip out. Liking what you see? Tag that like button down below. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe as well. I've got the boards just clamped up so I can kind of see what the lamp is going to look like. And I need to create a neck or a stem that I can mount my lamp hardware to. Basically a little tube that will come up that the wire can come up through and connect all the lamp parts down through the lamp. So I am using this. This is half inch steel conduit. I just had some leftover from when we built our house. I think I'm gonna cut off about I'm gonna start with three inches. I can always go a little shorter. And to cut that down, I am using just an angle grinder. This next step has me really nervous. So I have my conduit here. And in order to get the stem to, first of all, fit on top of this arched uh, radius, I need to cut a mortise. 
The mortise will also give some stability. I plan on using some epoxy in the mortise to hold the stem um, since it is kind of long and skinny. Cutting the mortise or the little shallow groove will be easy. I'll just use a Forstner bit, which creates a flat bottomed hole. I've already pre-drilled a tiny pilot hole directly in the center of my middle board. The only thing that makes me nervous though is I've spent a long time shaping and sanding and routing this arched radius board. And if I screw it up with the Forstner bit, I have to completely start over from scratch. Luckily, cutting the mortise was easier than I thought. I ended up drilling the hole about half an inch deep. I think it is a good idea to think about how I'm going to add my extension cord. Basically, how I'm gonna run it up the length of the lamp. So my idea is I will drill a hole through the very top of the center board, and then I am going to use a router with another straight cut bit and cut a groove. Actually, I think this one's a dado. It goes with the grain. That's a dado, right? I'm going to cut a dado, um, half inch by, I think I have it at 3 eighths inch, all the way down till I get close to the bottom of my center board. And then maybe I'll drill a hole so it can come out the center. Haven't decided yet, but I'm just gonna use my little trim router. And then that will give us a nice little channel that I can run my electrical cord through. And then once I glue these boards together, um, I'll have this nice little channel and everything will be hidden. And all you'll see is the cord coming out the bottom. Okay, I've got another tricky job to do. I need to connect the top hole that I drilled on the arch to the dado that I have cut through the middle board. So um, what makes this tricky is it's not a directly straight line. I'm going to have to kind of split the difference between the two and go at a shallow angle. I'm gonna go slow. I think I'll also probably, you know, draw out a pencil line so I have you know, a direction to shoot for. I'm gonna start with a smaller bit, just a quarter inch bit. That way, you know, I can move it around and make some adjustments if I need to. And then once I have it going the right direction, I'll open it up with a larger bit. At this point, it was a good idea to give every board a good sanding, making sure to really smooth over those roundovers. I'm sure you all know what sanding looks like, so this is a good time to take a break and talk about the sponsor of this video, Timberland Pro. I have very exciting news to share with you guys. My favorite footwear and apparel brand, Timberland Pro just launched a brand new women's workwear line and it is really good. I am wearing the core t-shirt in the color smoke blue and the Morphix Athletic Cut Utility Pants in black. There's just something about this color that I love. I don't know what it is, but you know, it just feels so natural. The core t-shirt comes in short sleeve or long sleeve for when it's not hot as blazes outside or when it is hot as blazes, but I want to keep my skin covered and protected. I think the thing I like the most about these Morphix pants are these stretchy hidden panels in the waistband. They bend and stretch as I move, so everything stays covered even while I'm working. It can be really hard to find women's work gear, especially the high quality stuff. So I am super grateful that Timberland Pro now has a pretty extensive women's line. Make sure you find the link in the description box below so you can check out the full line of women's workwear, as well as tons of other great stuff like work shoes and boots and a whole collection of guys workwear. Thank you Timberland Pro for sponsoring this video. It is time to start assembly. I think it'll be a lot easier to glue it up in sections instead of all five pieces all at once. I'm starting with the two smallest boards on each side. I'm going to apply some weldwood weld wood glue to both sides, um, lower the little one on top, and then get it clamped to my work surface. My outer sections are glued up, 
So I am ready to assemble the final middle board. But before I do that, I want to make sure that running my electrical cord through this dado is going to go smoothly. It would be kind of difficult to try to fish it through after everything's assembled. So I grabbed a small piece of nylon rope and I am going to stick that through the holes and leave it in the dado as I glue everything together. The idea is that I will have this rope in place once everything's assembled. And then when it comes time to feeding my electrical cord through, I can just attach it to one end of the rope and pull it out the other end. Like with most glue ups, I needed to work quickly. I didn't have a ton of flat surface area to clamp the lamp to my workbench, but I was finally able to get everything balanced and get a couple of clamps on the boards to help hold them together while they dried. The next morning, I took the lamp body outside and prepared it for finish. I really wanted to keep the pale blonde color of the poplar, so I chose to go with a water-based finish. I applied three coats of satin polyacrylic. The next step was to attach the threaded nipple to the top of the lamp body. All right, go ahead, get the giggles out. I said nipple. When we're talking about lamps, it's just a term that we're gonna use. The brass nipple is what attaches the lamp hardware to the body. I inserted the nipple into the mortise and held it in place using a quick setting five minute two-part epoxy. When I was sure the epoxy was fully cured, I attached the lamp's electrical cord to the feeder rope and pulled it up through the center channel. I then dropped on the electrical conduit neck and could begin wiring up the lamp hardware. Most DIY lamp kits come with pretty simple instructions to follow. When wiring up the socket, you want to use what's called an underwriter's knot. Once the hardware was in place, I could add what's called a lamp harp, which is the thing that's going to hold our shade. I screwed in the light bulb and gave my installation a test. Everything worked, yay! I added a basic white drum shade, but decided it was a little too plain. I wanted something that would honor the curvy lines of the lamp. That's when vertical blinds come on stage. These are vinyl vertical blind slats. You know those nasty things that we all had over our sliding door in the 80s and 90s? Well, I have an idea to use them. I picked up a pack of basic eight foot long slats from my local Home Depot, but after thinking about it, honestly, I probably should have just hit up Craigslist and bought a used set off of somebody for dirt cheap. I need to cut them down to length. Fortunately, the vinyl is really easy to cut. You can just use scissors if you want to, but I wanna make this go a lot faster. So I am going to tape them together using some masking tape, and then I can cut them all at once over on my miter saw. It's called gang cutting when you do this. Also, having them taped together is going to make drilling my holes in the exact same place a lot easier as well. Luckily, vinyl is really easy to cut or drill using woodworking tools, so I had no trouble getting through pretty thick stacks of slats. Now that each of my slats are cut to length and have the holes drilled in the corners, I'm going and snipping a horizontal line that connects with each of those holes. And that is so I have a way to hook the slat onto the hoop and then the hole will hold it in place. Time to start attaching the slats together. So I want to attach them face to face along the edge so that way when I open them, pull them apart, they will bend following the curve you know, that is naturally built into the slats. To be able to turn these slats into a lampshade, I purchased a DIY lampshade kit. 
basically two rings and the top one has what's called a spider, which is where you mount the shade to the lamp part. To be honest, I didn't count how many slats I used. I think it was somewhere over 30 for this 14 inch lampshade. first few slats were really easy to attach together and to add to the wire frame, but it got more difficult as the radius got tighter. I glued the edges of the last two slats together and here are the results. I definitely prefer the shape and look of the scallop lamp shade I made, but the translucency of the store-bought drum shade is kind of nice too. I think in the future, if I'm gonna repeat this process, I'll look for vertical blind slats that are slightly translucent so they can emit more light at the sides of the shade. Check out the full Building Modern on a Budget series if you're curious to see the rest of our house and to learn about the process of us building our own DIY modern house. If you like other types of DIY content, check out this video as well. I'm curious how many of you have vertical blinds in your house. Let me know in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching guys.